What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Wasteland, my name is Splattercat and we are here today getting ready to do a combat in a zone that I'm not sure if we're going to survive this, or at least one of our vehicles is looking the worst for wear, so this may not work out very well for us. Our other vehicle is a veritable Hellraiser, so I'm not really worried about his safety, ooh, we've got Senior Nasty Man down here, he's got a chain gun, and since I'm not interested in being another Link in said chain, let's put him right here for right now. Let him finish off that vehicle. Continue ramming and causing as much damage as possible before retreating, I guess. Then we'll allow the laser vehicle to finish off the remainder of the HP. Swing around the back because obviously line of sight is at play in this game. We've got another stun going, so let's get rid of the missile ship right there. We'll get started on this guy. There's actually a lot of blockages coming through, and I wish that I could ram some of these guys into them. Like maybe this guy right here. And into the wall he goes, so that solves one of our problems. Let me go ahead and put some DPS on that guy, and the combat is going to be over. And so that's how you use the environment right there to get the job done. We get a light pulse laser, a little bit of fuel, and some parts. So that's pretty cool. Is there a nearest camp here? There is not. There is no nearest camp. We're going to have to turn back. I don't think we're going to make it. We took too much damage on the front end of this. And so I think going back to the nearest camp is over there. It's about the same distance either way. Let's go back to the Mercury. I need to get into, light, I need to get into lighter colored climbs, I guess. Why we're climbing right now, I don't know. Are people like rock climbing? They're really, really into it. Like, they get stoked about the prospects of rock climbing. I enjoy it every now and again, but then you're all sore the next day. I don't know. I like free climbing when it's available. I will free climb every now and again. It seems you've driven straight into a sandstorm. There is a severe risk of losing contact with one of your vehicles. This event sucks because you have no choice but to lose 20 fuel. Like, that's it. RNG got you. And if you don't do the 20 fuel, you lose one of your vehicles almost every single time. It blows. It's an event that I sincerely and truly and deeply hate because it's not a fair event. It's just an event that happens that costs you a ton of money. So we lost 40 scrap right there just due to the fact that the RNG engine decided to screw us. And so, unfortunately, let's buy some fuel. That did put a big dent in our supplies. I don't think we're going to make it down to get the self-sealing stem bolts for right now. So I think that applying ourselves to doing some more radio frequencies, the distribution of nomad villages can be bad sometimes because they're in random spots every time you play the game. And so every now and again, you get a distribution that's really, really weird where there's like a bunch of them in the bottom left corner, but none anywhere else. And it can make the prospect of actually like winning the game difficult because you have no means to get around. Additionally, a strange ticking noise is coming from one of your vehicles. When you check it out, it seems to be the fuel pressure regulator. Is that important? Eh, fix it now, just in case. You don't have to, but I think it's a good plan. I don't want my vehicle blowing up, especially if it's the Woogie. The Woogie is the only reason we're actually surviving at the moment. You spot a large number of privateer vehicles engaged in combat. They seem to be two separate groups fighting each other. Let's wait and see if they finish each other off. The battle rages on until only one faction is still left standing. Their vehicles are too damaged to put up a decent fight, allowing you to easily dispatch them. Looting them all, you get 66 parts and 25 fuel. Okay, so favorable conditions right there. Not so bad. If we can stick to the lowlands, I would very much prefer it right here, but we're going into strength territory right now for the privateers, so... A voice calls out to you on the radio. You're the scumbags that stole our food cubes. Since we got extra fuel, let's, tuber let's turbocharge and get the hell out of here. I can't actually afford to be fighting with anything right now. And then if we could just get these stem bolts turned in, that's all that I care about at the moment. Like, that's the big thing that needs to get done right now. Oh, good, we're going into Torvac territory. That'll be pleasant. Torvac is always fun to be around. They don't like house guests. You arrive at the Eiffel's Incorporated office and are told that you were expected. Once again, you're led into the meeting room where Samuel and Maxwell are waiting for you. The old man's dead. Wonderful news. Very well done. I suppose that nullifies the need for the deed entirely. Jolly good show, old chap. Naturally, we shall uphold our end of the bargain. You can downhold it, too, as long as you hold it at all. We are trustworthy businessmen, after all. Yeah, it's funny how the untrustworthy businessmen are always the one trying to convince you that they're trustworthy. Your stem bolts are being delivered to your convoy as we speak. Pleasure doing business with you. Goodbye. And before you have the chance to say anything, return. You're led outside the office building. Damn businessmen, indeed. A large cargo of stem bolts is loaded onto your convoy. They should be more than sufficient for your Spache ship. Without warning, you are surrounded by Torvac vehicles. You have no idea how they managed to avoid detection by your scanners, but there's no chance to escape. Okay, so into a battle we go. Let's keep an eye out for them and see which direction they come from. Okay, since most of them are behind us, I think it's probably a good idea that we get started and avoid that heavy missile right there. My god. So Heavy Missile just came on in, dealing 141 damage to the Earth, I suppose. Somebody over here is getting repaired. Let me put some damage on that guy. Oh, do we not have line of sight? Okay. Well, with no line of sight, let me see if I can get rid of this dude right here. Because he's healing that guy. Got a double kill right there. I'm going to stun... 
You know what? You go over here and let's deal with Shields McGraw. How's that sound? Brook Shields over here. Just take care of him. A little bit of damage on that side. Throw something right there and just get to the ramming, I guess. Since we have, I'm going to get you out of my way. Because there are deadly obstacles coming straight at us. And I don't feel like running a blocker, I guess, running a foul of the obstacle course here. A little bit more damage done. We should be able to finish him off on the next exchange. And so there it is. Two more explosions. We're doing pretty solidly right now. I wish that we could get double lasers. If we could get double lasers, we'd be in really solid positions. We've got 10 fuel and 35 parts from right there. Upon further inspection, you don't find anything pointing at the cloaking technology. Weird. All right. Well, let's get the hell on out of this deep blue territory. I don't want to be here at all. We won't be playing any chess anytime soon. I watched a fascinating documentary on that whole thing. Kasparov vs. the Machine. It was a really, really good documentary. Like, I was actually impressed at the way they managed to sort of... You could tell it was done by a Kasparov fan because they were sort of questioning IBM's tactics with Deep Blue and like the things that they were doing and how they've never let anybody else see the software or whether it's been updated in between rounds. But it's very, very interesting. An incredible documentary that I really enjoyed. As you traverse the urban environment, you're ambushed by a squad of privateers. They've cut off all escape routes. You'll have to fight. That's unfortunate. I don't like it when things get removed. Getting cut off is all bad. On this side, we got big guy over here. This guy's got a leech drone, so unfortunately, we'll have to deal with that. Let me get started on him. I'm gonna go ahead and start ramming and just dealing damage since that goes straight through shields. Not too big of a deal. What I'd like to do right now is let's stun him so he's not dropping any more mines on us because that is something that I just don't have the time or patience to deal with. We continue ramming this individual over here. Actually, let's fall back towards the convoy. His laser's doing a little bit more damage than I like. I would hopefully, if I could get in a position over here, I might be able to draw this. Let me disable his shield for you real fast, shall I? And so there it is. If I could make this happen, I'd be really, really pleased. Oh, one of his own vehicles just got blown up. And so what I want to do right here... Eh, it's risky. Never mind. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's too risky. I know what I want you to do right now, but the chance of actually doing it seems like it might end up with me dying and... Oh, never mind. Go back this way. I'm bad. I thought the skull was on, I don't know, one of these layers right here. Looks like he's trying to repair over there. Let's send these two guys back, our little vanguard, as it were. We'll disable. What are you doing right now? Like, sometimes they pick the oddest locations to go to. Oh, he's actually... He's leeching my HP. Okay, that's bad. Especially since the Woogie is the best that I got right now. Hopefully before he sends that drone back out, we can get him finished off. There we go. All better. Oh my god. That was nasty. Light rocket artillery, 35 parts, and a little bit of fuel. Unfortunately, we need to get the hell on out of here. Let's go back to the Mercury. You can see here that the color is expanding in this territory. If we get ourselves caught up in too many more combats, we will not live to see another week or two. The game is difficult, I'll give it that. The game is very, very difficult. In our cargo bay right now, we have the self-sealing stem bolts. Ooh, we have no choice. We have to pay them right now because we can't take another combat. So it was a checkpoint that's demanding we pay for passage. We offload these stem bolts, and so there it is, back inside the camp. We're actually, this is a bad playthrough. It started out well. But, things are a little bit out of control right now, and I think we're actually going to lose this one. Just saying. From my limited experience, I think we might not make this one. Let's go for a little bit of armor and a little bit of health right there. We're low on fuel, so obviously we're going to have to drop a whole bunch of cash buying that. Alright, and let's head off in a different direction, shall we? I figure what's closest from here? We can go with the flux capacitor, which is over this way. Let's go after the flux capacitor, shall we? We've got to go a local professor in Omec Prime. Okay, so that works out for me right now. That'll give us a chance to have a look around for better loot and also to get into a few more fights. As I said in the previous episode, this game does have a lot of combat, and if the combat doesn't grip you immediately, it's probably not a game I would recommend because you're going to be doing it a lot. I mean, I would say 90% of the events end with combat. Why are these always just ass deep within heavy, heavily fortified territory. Let's see, you arrive at the professor's laboratory. The plot around it is littered with various bits of machinery, presumably discarded experiments, whilst the laboratory itself appears to be an old hangar. Approach the laboratory. You enter the laboratory, which is filled with machines and experiments, making all kinds of sounds. Amidst the chaos, the professor is running around pulling levers, adjusting dials, and scribbling notes whilst mumbling to himself. He notices you and approaches. Hello, my name is Professor. I used to have a different name, but I forgot. Hardly any use for a name anyways. Ha ha. Ask about the flux capacitor. 
So, a flux capacitor, you say? You came to the right place. I'm quite the expert on those babies. I can build you one suitable for a spaceship, but I haven't got everything I need. In order to generate the required 1.21 gigawatts, I'll need a highly volatile energy source, which I haven't got lying around. But I know where I can find some. Only Torvac has access to energy sources of this magnitude, so if you could acquire an energy pylon and bring it back, I could fix you up with a flux capacitor and use the excess energy for my own projects. We have a deal, yes? Okay, sure. Ha! Huh, wonderful! Okay, so I know of a Torvac pylon facility which will suffice. I'll enter the coordinates to your map and you can head over and acquire one that should provide plenty of energy. Excellent, you must be on your way then. Okay, goodbye. The professor heads back to the laboratory frantically. What happens if we follow him inside? I bet something bad happens. Flux capacitor is way off the left. I'm going to suggest we find a camp because our fuel's looking a little bit low. And of course, it's going to be ankle deep inside the high level territory. I don't know, I feel like the territories expand too quickly in this game. I really sincerely do. Like, I feel like I'm always behind the 8-ball no matter how fast I work in this game. Let's disable his shield. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to get rid of this guy right now because he's using a drain drone. Oh, that sucks so much. How is he able to have a drain drone on, like, a normal craft? Oh, never mind. He's getting healed by that guy over there, too. Luckily, the AI has decided to generously protect us from debris, so that works out pretty well. Let's start moving in this direction. And I'd like to keep lasers on him. Let's move forward. If we could put some lasers on him, that'd be cool too. I think this combat should be over pretty quickly. Let me stop this mine layer from getting us all nice and laid out with mines right now because I don't feel like dealing with it. A little bit more damage done right there. Get in here and ram on this guy for a moment or two. Nobody's targeting him for some reason. Let me get out of the way of that obstacle and make sure that our opponent... Oh, never mind. Well, I'll do a little bit more damage right there, and that should end the fight, won't it? And there it is. We completed the fight. So that should give us a little bit more fuel to play around with. We got a Mark I shield, which is pretty cool. Yikes. This is going to get ugly really, really fast. And I think this is actually... Can I turn this off? Is this actually disableable? Because I know this is like the worst territory ever. Entirely, The entire map will eventually be covered with deep colors. You spot a wreck partially covered by sand. It blows up when you go near it. Spoiler alert. Don't go near it. It's a bad plan. It's not going to work out for you or anybody that you know. I'm going to scrap both the things we picked up along the way so that we can actually repair a little bit better while we're here. There it is. We've got 100 left over. Unfortunately, it's not really going to buy anything here. Aside from the fuel we need to keep on trucking, so there it is. Where does that leave us with regards to our access to the flux capacitor? Leaves us a little bit closer. Let's see what we can do here. This also looks like it leads out the back end of that territory, so it might be a decent plan. Yeah, that's not too terrible. As you traverse the stress of desert, you spot several wrecks partially buried by the sand, likely the victims of local privateers. Onwards, ignore those. You get attacked when you go near them. I'm giving you lots of spoiler alerts today, but basically everything in this game ends up with you getting attacked. Like, I don't want to be a dick and, like, ruin the magic of the whole thing, but everything ends up with you getting shot, blown up, or attacked. So just don't put yourself at risk if you can help it. You arrive at the Torvac Pylon Facility. is teeming with activity. is surrounded by numerous Torvac vehicles. We radio the facility. We are the Torvac. This facility is out of bounds for non-Torvac. Please state your business. I don't want to demand an energy source. I want to drive away. After a slight pause, they respond by stating, We understand. It is unprecedented to hand over one of our energy pylons to non-Torvac. Probability of our success when engaging in combat is insufficient to validate refusing your request. We agree. A pair for the approach of one of our transport vehicles. We suggest you abstain from mentioning this incident to anyone. A transport vehicle appears from within Torvac pylon facility and approaches your convoy. It delivers the energy pylon to your convoy before heading back to the facility. You put it on your convoy and head out. Oh. Okay, that went better than expected. There's a foul stench on the wind. Yeah, let us not tarry for long. Nobody wants to be tarry for any extended amount of time. Right now, I think we're probably going to have to hit, given our fuel situation, we'll probably have to hit a village over here somewhere before we can get anything else done. So hopefully our 11... Oh, never mind. The Mercury's right there. Let's just go back to the Mercury and we'll get it for there. We have shots fired. Let's go ahead and prepare for battle because we actually need the extra scrap in order to supply ourselves properly with fuel. I also don't like how your vehicles maintain their same position after combat. I don't know if maybe I can rearrange that somehow, but I would love to do so. So we've got a repair vehicle over there that's kind of getting his thing on right now. Continue firing at him. If we can kill him off, that would be Excelsior. Disable his shield right now. And then we'll head over and start working on this little guy because they don't appear to be hitting us very hard. Is he out of range right now? 
There it is. And so give him a nice ramming. He looks like he needs it. And then get out of the way of that mine, please. On this side, let's line up for some more ramming, shall we? We'll disable his shield, and then we'll go ham mode on him. Because I do enjoy ham every now and again. Having pushed him back, I need to clear line of sight so that he can continue firing. And now repositioning ourselves to the front end of the field. Ah, shit, he got me with a mine. Bastard. Little bastard. I hate mine layers. They're the worst. Because they don't even do anything. That's the thing is they just exploit the fact that you're dealing with other combats. Like, they use the same strategy every time, too. They just move to the front of the map and they just start dropping mines everywhere. Making themselves a general nuisance. And I would say that they've earned the promotion. Being shot at right now. Let me stun him so that we know he's not going anywhere. And the moment that we come into range, let's unload on him with everything we've got from our laser bays. And so there it is, our laser bays. It's not actually a bay for lasers. It's actually a bunch of bay horses that fire lasers out of their eyes. And then we just duct tape them to the top of the craft, and it seems to work out pretty well. A light pulse laser, so that was actually lucrative. We might be able to get out of this in... Yeah, we might be able to get out of this in one piece. Let's camp right here. We've got a pulse laser. I'm going to scrap that because we don't need it. And... Looking at our health, we're actually okay. Let's just buy some more fuel and be on our way out. We'll go talk to the professor in just a moment. Hopefully with the excess energy, he'll be able to make himself some kind of hair combing device. Because it did say that he was particularly unkempt. The flux capacitor is up here, 121 to the north. Obviously, we're going to have to go through Torvac territory, and I don't think they're too happy with us right now. I mean, I didn't really want to demand the thing, but it worked out okay. From behind some dunes, a pack of Torvac vehicles approach your convoy, ready to attack. We have overestimated our chances we will leave you to be, so I managed to intimidate them. That's good, because honestly, I don't think we can deal with too much more combat right now. We want to stay out of this. You drive past a Torvac Corporation checkpoint, and they attempt to radio you. We greet you. We need you to transport our mil-spec ED-209 for us. We will pay well. Okay. A small Torvac vehicle delivers a cargo crate to your convoy. We are pleased. We will supply you with the appropriate coordinates. We will reward you upon... Okay, awesome. As you leave the Torvac checkpoint behind you, one of your engineers seeks you out. Excuse me, sir, but I was thinking perhaps we shouldn't deliver this Torvac mil-spec thing. You could try selling it on the black market, or I could have a look at it myself and see if I can figure out if it's worth something. I don't know if it's actually rigged up. An ED is probably, that's probably a Robocop reference, so this thing is probably remote controlled, and it'll more than likely wreck us if we don't do what they want. We'll deliver it. It'll be fine, I bet. Flux capacitor up here. How far away is that? It's back that way. We'll have to figure it out, I guess. Let's get back to the road here and make the best gas mileage that we can. It's not like we're driving Priuses here. Pri. You return to the professor's laboratory and approach. As you approach the lab, you hear the unmistakable sounds of combat. It appears the professor is being attacked by raiders. We intervene. Hooray! Yay for us being the good guys that we are. Let's take a shot right there, and I'd actually like you to close with him. Yeah, deal some damage right there. Let's go ahead and stun him up, too. I like leaving my enemies stunned and unable to react. And so I think they should be able to finish him off shortly. We do have a lot of damage being dealt, unfortunately. And my characters are tripping over each other, which they have the tendency to do. It's not my favorite thing to deal with, but it happens. Let's go ahead and see if we can push them back and away from our convoy. I think that if I can make this happen, this might be survivable. I don't know. We might be able to get rid of this dude down here through the successful application of a stun bolt, but I don't even know if we're going to have the opportunity to do that. Continue firing at him while ramming him. Okay, swap targets. You start moving away so that we can deal with this threat right here. You move up and along this way. Ram him into the direct line of fire for that obstacle. Stun him and then get away. Goodbye, buddy. And so we got loot. The professor runs out of the laboratory and approaches the convoy. God, after a bunch of disgruntled raiders and there are another bunch of disgruntled raiders unhappy about my belated paying for services. Many thanks for your help disposing of them. We've got the energy pylon. Great, wonderful, excellent. Wow, this is amazing. A functional Torvac energy pylon. I've wanted to get my hands on one of these for ages. I'll get your flux capacitor running, no problem. Just a moment. He takes it and starts tinkering with it. After some time, he approaches you. I got it all working, ready for you to take back to your spaceship. The energy pylon has some energy left, but don't worry about it. I'll find some uses for it. He appears to have a slight maniacal grin on his face. You thank the professor and say goodbye before loading the flux capacitor onto your convoy okay where's the nearest camp by the way like where is that at it's up to the north we do have enough fuel to where we could make a run back the mill spec is down there the mercury is also down Ugh. 
One of your vehicles overheats due to the unforgiving sun. It is swiftly jury-rigged, but proper repairs require a garage. See, we just got dominated by RNG, and that's really unfortunate because... We kind of need our trucks to be intact, so hopefully we can make it back to where we came from without anything else going wrong. I don't know, we'll have to see. Let's see here. As you drive through the city, you stumble upon a squad of privateers who are pillaging local houses. We can't take the combat right now, so we've got to ignore it. The privateers seem more interested in continuing their pillaging than pursuing your convoy. We can't afford combat right now, so unfortunately, since our wallets are tapped out, let's just keep riding. Oh, there's a town down here. Oh. Let's just do that then. Alright, well, this will get us back into combat pretty quickly. We may be out of fuel, and we may be kind of SOL right now, but hopefully it's enough to get us by. We don't really have much to sell, so... Eh. I don't mean to sell myself short, but this adventure might end shortly. You pass many rocky cliffs while traveling through the desert. A good deal of the wrecks littered the cliff sides and natural inclines, and they look pretty damaged. How did they look before they were damaged? I assume they must have been just like dime pieces. Check the wrecks and put it to our deck. Let's see, before you have a chance to the... Oh, okay, so we get attacked by pirates. Hooray! Torvac pirates, even. Making our lives even worse. But yeah, I think the difficulty in this game escalates too quickly. Like, this is pretty much the fastest and the most... Why are you ramming right now? And we're occupying the same space as our enemies right now. But yeah, the enemies level up and get stronger as time goes along. I think they should have limited it to geographical locations instead of things just, like, getting harder as things go along. I, I really don't know what to tell you on that one. It's just, like, one of those weird situations where I feel like no matter how fast I work in this game, I never work fast enough. Get him. Get him. You had one job. All you had to do is shoot him, like, one time. Down here, I want you to continue with ramming speed. We're going to take some damage from an obstacle right there. Continue ramming and dealing as much damage as you can. Disable his shield. Continue ramming. No, oh, I don't want you to ram. That was a mistake. Okay, well, either way, it's like a wang-shaped rock right there. I don't know. I don't know if it's bulbous enough to qualify as that, I guess. And so another combat is a join. We get a light MG, 33 bolts, and 14 fuel. Most of the vehicles don't seem to be of any use, but you manage to find one that's in better shape. Inside, you find dog tags with the name Italics written on them. Most among the debris, you find a functional O item. Okay, well, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a taunter. Okay, so Italics is a YouTuber. Never met him. Had no. I've had zero contact with him, so that's all that I could really say about it. But we'll get rid of some of these random items right here because they will line us up for repairs. And they will put us in a spot to purchase a few more. God, there's so many death rays in here. I want all of these on my ship. Unfortunately, we just need to keep our fuel up and running, so... Let's go. We've got to go back to the meal spec ED. Oh, it's right down here. Well, then let's go handle that while we're in the vicinity. Hopefully the reward will prove to be very, very lucrative and not an imminent betrayal. So, see what happens here. You arrive at the Torvac checkpoint and radio them. We've got your cargo. We've been anticipating your arrival. We are pleased. 60 bolts and 4 fuel. That's it? We believe that you should leave now. Yeah. Damn. We just got rooked. We just got rooked. Let's go up in here. That wasn't worth the effort at all. Four fuel. They should have at least given us 40 or 50 fuel to make up for the fact that we went all over the map for that shit. As you drive around the abandoned city, you realize all these alleyways and streets would be the perfect ambush location. There doesn't seem to be any activity, though, and it's always good to be prepared. Alright, well, nothing going on over here. That leaves us with Sonic Screws and the RX chip. Let's go for the RX chip, I guess. Since, you know, I'd like to own an RX someday. That'd be kind of dope. Let's go down this way and see what we can accomplish here. Sometimes I get disoriented in this game and I have no idea where I am, but... This area actually doesn't seem to be as ripped apart as the others. You come across a lone figure standing by the side of the road. He has his arm outstretched and is holding up a thumb. Hitchhiking in these parts? Seriously? Stop and talk. The man explains he's a free-minded spirit, soul-searching whilst traveling Omec Prime. He tells you his next destination isn't too far from here and asks you for a ride. Okay, hop on. It's probably an ambush, but, you know. What are you gonna do? We'll go hitching a ride. He's back the other direction. Of course he is. Nothing is ever in the direction you want to go. Alright, well... This is like a critical junction for us right now. Let's go with hitching a ride, I guess. We'll go drop this one off. Hopefully we'll get lined up on some more combat and that'll allow us to refuel ourselves and make sure that we don't end up in any dire situations. Wolves getting vastly out of size and control. The scanners pick up several vehicles chasing after your convoy on the main road. It seems as if they're sporting guns that look remarkably like modified ancient cannons. Privateers incoming. Okay, well, we'll take a couple shots at him and we'll see what happens here. Really? He's going to start me off with debris straight away, huh? 
I don't know if he'll make that one, but we're going to give it a try. Let me knock out his shield. This guy either has a heal bot or a drain bot, and I'm not sure which. Both are going to be troublesome and a pain in the ass to deal with. Get out of the way of that missile, if possible. Did we take that damage right there? I don't think that we did. Okay, so on this side, continue ramming right there. Keep him all nice and fixed up on this side. Let's get his shield down, and we'll start off with some laser blast attacks, because that guy's going to be down in just a moment. Let's move around that debris. We'll move up to here. And I'd like to set him up for his next little bit of combat. It looks like we actually have a whole bunch of things up and in here that are... Those were slightly less aligned. I might be able to make this work. Okay, so let's ram him to there and then move forward. Ah, it didn't work out. Unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Yeah, they're draining my health and healing themselves, I think. So we'll kill him off real fast. And then over here on this side, we're going to need... Oh, we actually have no way to get his shield down right now. That's actually a really, really powerful weapon. Almost to the border of being overpowered. You can get those for your main vehicle right here, where it... Let's stun him right there, and hopefully we'll be able to kill him off. There it is. Okay. So the drone is really, really powerful, and in fact that we, the fact that we didn't have one spawn on our map is actually really, really bad for us. We got a little bit of loot, but not enough to repair anything. A little bit of fuel. Once again, things don't seem to be going our way. I'd throw it all backwards and pout right now, but I don't think it would help. We've got a camp back there. Let's see if we can drop him off quickly without any hubbub. Any ballyhoo. You arrive at the hitchhiker's indicated location. Hitchhiker hops off your convoy. Thanks a lot. I'm glad there's some other open-minded individuals in these wastelands. He starts walking away. Okay, well, what? No reward? He looks at you blankly. I don't really have anything. I thought you were having, like, I thought you were... Helping out of kindness. All right, well, good luck. Ah, kind-hearted after all. I knew I made the right choice to have a ride with you. You do deserve a reward. I have my own vehicle parked near here. Wait for me, and I'll join you on your quest. Oh, cool, the flower power. I'd like to take a look and see what he's able to do since Woogie's actually a little bit roughed up right now. You come across a lone figure wandering the wastelands. It appears to be a blind man in brown robes. Did he brown them himself? Was he doing a little bit of homebrew art? Or are they brown to begin with via dye? Stop and talk. The man looks straight at your convoy despite being blind and proclaims empathy must be limited. Ultimately, empathic gift blurs the boundaries between hunter and victim, between the successful and the defeated. Okay, you are suddenly surrounded by a blinding flash. The old man has disappeared. So did he blind us by flashing us or did he pull like some ninja bujitsu action right there? I always wanted to leave a room by dropping a flash bomb. I always thought that'd be real satisfying. Batman style. Just like, psh. I hate it when he does that. Let's go back to this little village over here. We'll refill and we'll get repaired up, and I think that'll put us back on the road. And we will be about ready to go after that RX chip, I think. I don't know how much fuel we're going to be able to barter for here. Hopefully enough. Well, that's going to have to do her for right now, I guess. I don't know, when I watched other people play this game on YouTube, it seemed like their loot was a lot better than mine. Like, it seemed like when they won fights, they got like 75 bolts and like good stuff. Now it seems like you barely get scraps for everything other than quests. But nonetheless, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Convoy. I'll see you later. Hi, do everybody.